Right. So somebody asked about manure management going to a no-till system because in their county, they were under the, the impression that they had to incorporate. And uh, here in motherland, Minnesota, uh, that's not an uncommon thing or that did not strike me as odd at all. I'm, I'm sure depending if you're near a watershed or in some type of watershed district, uh, depending on what county you're in, your county board might have their own rules. Um, some of the counties up here have rules on what type of, uh, of these byproducts you can get and apply. They want to see soil tests. Uh, the county board wants to see soil tests or the township, the township, I should say, wants to see soil tests before you just willy nilly go get a bunch of byproduct brought in. And yep, it feels very intrusive as a farmer, but the township has the best interest of the township at, at heart. And, and so, yeah, in, in mother Minnesota, we, we got to follow some regulations. Um, we still need to do a good job of management. Obviously, we're not going to go out in the middle of winter now and spread our hilly ground with with liquid dairy manure. I mean that you know we got to use some manure. We, we're not even going to spread dry manure on that kind of ground because by springtime, you know, it's all going to be down at the bottom of the hill. Well, at the bottom of the hill, is that going to lead to to some runoff? So we still want to have our good stewardship practices. But once springtime comes around. Are right ahead of planting, we can, uh, excuse me, I got I sat at that stupid computer all morning doing, uh, book work, trying to wrap up 2018 year end stuff for analysis. And I mean, it's seven, seven o'clock or something, you know, the day, the day's half over. You remember being a kid sleeping in and school's out and you think, ah, I get to sleep in. And then your folks come in, time to get up. And you're like, what time is it? It's 5.30. The day's halfway over. Sunlight's burning. And you're just like, I'm seven. Give me a break. Let me sleep in. But, uh, but yeah, we need to do good management. Once springtime comes around, we can start traveling in the field without cause and ruts and whatever. Then let's start spreading that dry manure, the pen pack stuff. Slow the slow the apron down. Let the horizontal beaters do a good job. Spreading dry manure on no till is not new. We've been doing it for thousands of years. Um, on on our hay ground, you know, you just let the manure spreader chew through the pile, so you're not just dropping big clumps. And a couple rains come by, you got 25 to 28 days before the next cutting of hay. And uh, or on bean ground, you do it ahead of the bean drill and. By, by fall time, it's, you're not going to have clumps of manure that your sickle is going to run through on the hay field. Like I said, you get 25, 28 days for the next cutting. You're going to, it's going to be all melted away. It's going to be gone. It, that manure hits the ground. Race is on. I mean, it immediately is the next bit of moisture to be added to it. It just melts and it is now just, you just added it. And around that little, you know, a little drop of turd that hits the ground. There, there's not much value of NP and K in there. In pen pack manure, you're, you're hauling out substance. You're hauling out humus material and organic matter material and, and just good soil building material. You're not hauling out tons and tons of, of P and K. Um, so we still need to follow with a good nutrient program for the rest of our crop. But, but for the soil, meh, what a beautiful, that dry manure is beautiful. Liquid manure. If I was still milking today, trying to do the soil health thing, I'd have a strip till rig. No doubt about it. No question about it. I, I would have a hard time trying to do liquid dairy manure in a no-till situation and just spread it on top other than the hay ground. We did it on the hay ground all the time. Um, but other than hay ground for my corn, I, I would rather, and beans, I would rather be doing a strip till unit, knife it in, get it down there six, seven, eight, nine inches, and uh, get it deep, safe, and banded. And then with a strip till unit, how awesome would that have been uh, to just take the tanker and drive through your field? You create your strips. You whether you do it in the fall or the next spring, um, it don't matter. How how awesome is that? Come next spring, your fertility program's done for the most part, and your tillage work is done. You just Get a little rotary hoe to do some strip freshening and plant. Or just plant on the stupid strips in the spring. They warm up so nice themselves anyhow. Um, that, that would be the way to go. If I had dairy, I would have a deep knife unit 
because there's a good chance you'd be chasing silage trucks just because of land management. You're either chasing small grains or silage because them fields are the ones that are off early in the fall and it's usually you can find a dry enough window to get the manure out on that ground without creating a bunch of mud and ruts. I mean, you get years, but get that deep ripper, do your deep ripping behind all that silage truck traffic until you can get to figure out how you're gonna do um, cover cropping and, and all that other stuff. But hey, silage chopping, you're gonna create some compaction. You're gonna be out there anyhow. Let's just run a shank with the strip till and uh, kind of keep that Band-Aid fix going. Um, it, you know what I mean? And that, that's how I would manage the manure on a no-till, strip-till system. That's my opinion. That's just how I would do it. Um, you guys throw in, how would you do it? How are you doing it for all the cattle guys out there that are doing no-till? How are you managing your manure? And uh, let's give the guy some, some options and some stuff to think about. And so, guys, thanks for watching.